Okay, so it's time to talk about the cosine rule. That's it. That's the cosine rule. Now, it would be irresponsible of me to just say that's the cosine rule. Why on earth would this be a rule? So we can use a similar approach to what we did with the sine rule when we proved that. So we can just say a, b, c, a, length b, length c here, and we can draw in a little line here, and we'll just call that our height. Okay, look at the cosine rule for a second, right? What does it remind you of? a squared equals b squared plus c squared. I can see some Pythagoras stuff going on. And we can actually do some Pythagoras type stuff with our two right angle triangles here. Now we can do something pretty clever. Uh, we can just make, we can divide length b up into two different lengths. We can call this length here x. And if that's x and that's b, then this length here would be b minus x. All right, with all of that in mind, we can now create two Pythagorean relationships. With our first triangle over here, we can say that the hypotenuse, c squared, equals x squared plus h squared. That's going to be useful. We can say with our bigger triangle that a squared equals um, h squared plus b minus x squared. Okay, and we can of course expand, if we look focus on our second one here, we can expand that to be a squared equals h squared plus b squared minus 2bx plus x squared, just by expanding that. Okay, what have I got here? What have I got? Now this next step will blow your mind a little bit. I've got a h squared here and an x squared here. I'm just going to rewrite this line, just the, change the order a little bit, make things a little more obvious. All right, so I've done it. I just brought that x squared to the front and then h squared, b squared, negative 2bx. Just brought the x to the front, that's it. Uh, this is the cool bit. Look at this, x squared plus h squared equals c squared. x squared plus h squared Right, we can replace x squared plus h squared in this equation with the c squared in this equation. So we can now say that a squared equals not x squared plus h squared, but c squared plus this b squared thing minus 2bx. Great, this is looking really good, right? Uh, if we look at what we're trying to prove a squared equals b squared plus c squared, b squared plus c squared. And then I've got negative 2b, I've got negative 2b, but then I've got this x sitting here, which is a problem, because I don't want x, I want uh, c cos a. All right, let's look at x. What is the value of x? Okay, well, this is angle a, right? Let's look at trig ratios. Cos of a, so let's do that in a different color because this is just kind of an important piece here. Cos of a is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. X over C. I can rearrange that. I can rearrange it to say that X equals C cos a. X equals C cos a. So we can finish all of this off now. Let's do it in a different color because this is the big finale. A squared equals, let's do the B squared first, plus C squared minus two B. And so this C cos A, we can replace the X with C cos A. C cos A. This is equal to this. We've proven it. We've proven that there is a relationship in any triangle whatsoever that a squared, the length of one of the sides, is equal to, well, the length of one of the sides squared is equal to one of the sides squared, the other side squared, minus two times one of the sides times the other side cos the angle opposite that thing there. This formula is one of those formulas that you memorize or you just have on your formula sheet so you can always refer to it. 
uh, but it is one that we're going to use a lot when it comes to triangles. That's the proof. That's how it works. Now let's just jump in and start doing stuff with it.